I've got um, an iPad with the picture that I'm using, which is James's. I've got a pallet. You can use a lid from an ice cream um, container or anything really that's flat that you can put paint on any sort of container. I've got my three brushes there and I've also got my cardboard. Now the cardboard is the drawing that I showed you last video where you need to transfer from your printed image onto there using some graphite pencil on the back of the printed picture and then using a biro to then convert that image onto the cardboard. Right boys, so I have my little art section or um, I have my art studio set up here. I've just got an old table. I've put a drop sheet there. I've got my paint brushes. I've selected the paint and I've just got a cup of water. Just a simple cup of water but I actually poured two because um, one's going to get dirty. The other one I'll use to really clean the brush up well. Now the colours I've selected are the blue, the red and the green. Now, the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm looking at the darker colours here and I don't use black. Okay, black is the very last colour I would ever use, so I stick to my primary colours because they're more saturated, um, they come out um, a lot more um, exciting. If you use black, it's very dull. Now, I'm going to get a paintbrush and I'm going to mix my blue and I'm going to mix my red and you can see already that it's getting very, very dark. That's almost black. Now, if I want to um, make it less purple in colour, I can always add a little bit of green and then we're getting very close to a black colour there. Okay? So, I always start with the darkest colour because then I can come back and I can put my light colours in later. Now, we can see with James's picture, he's got a little bit of laundry there, he's got a cupboard and he's also got, I think maybe his kitchen bench there. And then he's got some material and he's got his fruit. Start in the background. Am I going to put all those details in there? No, I'm just going to simply go around where the lounge is and I'm going to paint it black in all those areas. Now the thing I don't want to do boys is I do not want to go over my drawing in that I still want to keep those outlines, okay? So I keep the outline Paint it very, very dark there. This is where the cupboard is here. Now, there is a laundry basket behind there. I'm not going to paint that in at this stage. I might like to later. I'll just see how I go in regards to what sort of details I want to put in there. So you can see here how I'm just painting around those bottles. I'm making sure that they still stay there. I'm also making sure that I've got the lounge there. Okay, so painting around there. The lounge is here. You can see there that the lounge is quite dark here as well, just where the material is, the, um, the striped material that's here. So I'll go ahead and paint that. Now I printed out some pictures for you boys if you were at school, but if you weren't at school you can do the same as me. You can use um, an iPad or your phone or something to have a look at these colours if you don't have a printed version. Okay, so I leave the pure colours there but I just mix it as I go along. Now where else can I see some dark colours if you have a look here? Just behind this um, sculptural piece. By the way, a really interesting um, setup you've got there, James. Good composition. He's still alive. So I'm continuing on with the red, the blue, touch of green, very dark colour, no black. Coming in here, the brush that I'm using is this one here. It's the middle of the road one. This one's quite large. I could use that but it would get really messy and of course I have this detail brush and the detail brush is if I want to do outlines etc etc. I'm not going to do that yet, I'm just going to stick with the main block. So I'm blocking out colours boys. I'm concentrating on the background first. Always start on your background first. Now also behind the kitchen bench there I can see that there's some dark just where the table is. So there's the table here 
and there's some dark there just behind this sculpture so I might just pop that in now and um, just Now you're probably wondering why am I not sort of painting the foreground and why aren't I starting to put some colour in and all that sort of stuff. If I put the dark in, it works out really well once I put the lighter colours on top. The reason why I always do the background is because it gives it dimension. If you start in the foreground, it flattens out the picture. What you want to do is the paint to gradually overlap as it comes forward. Okay, a um, little bit of dark here. Now the reason why we actually used a primer on top of this cardboard was so that when I painted it, the paint didn't soak in. If you use pure cardboard, and I think um, one of you boys might have um, not got a chance to use primer on your cardboard, so what you can do is you can put PVA over the top first if you want to and that will sort of block it or you can get some house paint, maybe do some white house paint on it if you like. Um, we use primer at school which means that it's just going to keep the paint on the surface, stop it from getting very dull and getting soaked into that cardboard because you'll notice it'll get very dull very quick and the paint will disappear and get sucked into that surface. Okay, so this is the next area I'm looking at. Um, so I've done the dark colours in the background. I can see here where the bottle is, there's also some dark it's actually dark there, okay, I've blocked out quite a lot, probably more than what I was supposed to. Here on this side, now if you overdo the black, it does not matter because you're going to be coming back, or the dark colour, you'll be coming back once the black is dry and you're going to be starting to paint some details, okay? So looking at some more little bits and pieces of dark there, little triangle here. All right, um, now that I've done this background bit, what I'd like to do is start looking at the other darker colours that are around this, this um, picture here. Now we can see that the bottle is very, very dark. Um, I could start blocking in maybe some of that. This paintbrush may be a little bit too thick for some parts of it, so I'll probably have to come back with the detail brush here. And begin using that. Okay, so here with the lid, I'm not being too perfect about it boys, I'm just trying to block it in at the moment. As the painting progresses, I will get more and more detail. The blue, the red, touch of green. A little bit more blue than red, so it's not too purple in colour. Okay, now I'm also trying not to lose the detail of the bottle. I'm keeping that line there. I want to see that line. Because if I lose my drawing, it's going to be very, very difficult to come back. Okay, so getting my detail brush around the label. I will not be putting in um, the name of the alcohol um, because when we do HSC works, we're not allowed to have things like alcohol and things like that. But we can have a bottle that's obscure and nobody can really see what it is so you know people can imagine that it might be a juice bottle or something like that um, but we can't actually have um, the names of alcohol on there okay uh, same as HSC works you're not allowed to have logos you're not allowed to have things like McDonald wrappers you're not supposed to have coca-cola you could get the impression of having those things on there, but it can't actually be um, explicit. Okay, so getting the basic shape there. Now you can see that this is starting to come along and I'm getting more and more details. Now I'm going to um, continue on with this work, but I'm just gonna upload this video and uh, so that you guys can see how you can get started. And then I'm going to do more and I'm going to um, give you the next videos, okay? So this is just how to get started. Remember, start from the background, background move forward. Um, don't have to get too many details in initially. Um, more and more details will start to appear. And it just depends also on your particular painting. 
or your resource that you're using for your painting. So for this one that James had, it's very lineal. You can see a lot of lines in there. It's um, more design, I suppose, in appearance. Yours might be a little bit more expressive in the way that the paint's been put, but you still need to start with your darkest colours first. Okay? All right, so I'll turn off this video now and upload, and then I will continue on my painting.